Hello, this is Jonathan Bukhara for Free on C++. This is part four in our mixed series of articles and videos about heaps and priority queues in C++. In part three, which you can find on the Fluent C++ blog on fluentcpp.com, we left off with the question, why bother with heaps? Indeed, priority queues are so much simpler because they just have push and pop and top and that's it. Whereas with heaps, we've got lots of algorithms and, and you can manipulate the whole collection and mess it up and break the heap properties. So why bother with heaps and what can heaps do that priority queues don't? This is what we're going to talk about today. The obvious difference is that in a heap, you can access the whole collection. Whereas in a priority queue, you just have access to the largest, the top element of the heap. What can you do with that whole collection? So there's one use case where heaps can break something that priority queues don't and that's for example when you have events coming in with different priorities and you want to process those events according to their priority and not to their order of arrival. For that you can just use a priority queue. Now let's imagine that you can have several processes of events at the same time and you want to chunk up the batches of events that come in off to several processes. With a queue, you can't do that. There's no such thing as a split on a queue, on a priority queue. But with a heap, since you have access to the whole structure, you can extract a sub heap that's also a heap by construction and send it off to a processor and extract another sub heap and send that off to a second processor. Let's see how in code we can extract a sub heap from a heap. Let's consider this heap that has 9 as a root and let's extract the subtree that has 8 as a root. So we're going to scratch it down into an array, array that's just here in code. So the purpose is to write a piece of code that extracts a subheap starting at index 1, which is the position of 8 here. As we've seen in part one of our series, we've got the left child and right child function that given an index, get the index of the left child or the right child of this index. The right way to go about that is to use queues. It consists in traversing the heap in order, which means that we traverse it level by level, the first level and then a level just below and then the level below this one and so on and so forth. And we keep the indices that we visit this way and we've got a collection of indices that's in the right order describing the heap. And then we'll figure out what values correspond to these indices and push them into the, the result vector. Let's do that with using a queue. So we're going to keep a trace of all the indices corresponding to the subheap. And we're going to keep a queue of the current indices that we are traversing at a given level. I'm using Q, which is in the header Q, and that we've seen in part three of this series on heaps and priority queues. So we're going to start by pushing the subroot onto the queue and also push the index of the subroot onto the indices of the subheap itself. Now we're going to go through the queue and push the indices of the children of every index that we meet on the queue so that this way we're going to traverse the tree in order, which means level by level. We push the root that we want to extract onto the current indices in the, on the queue and also push it in the subheap indices that we want to remember to get the values later on. We're going to go through the queue while there's something in it and we're going to pop an index from the queue, which is this index here, and push its children essentially. So if it has a left child, then we push the index of its left child both on the queue that we want to treat on the next level and on the indices that we want to remember for the values later. And that's about it. Now we're going to retrieve the values and push them in the vector that we will return. So 
So in this last part, we create a vector to return it. And in this vector, we take all the indices that we found out were in the subheap and they are in the right order of defining a heap squashed down into an array. And we return the value that was in the heap at those indices. Let's try out this code. This is a heap. Now we're just going to make a little bit of makeup on it to make it look more STL-like in its interface. So we're going to pass an output iterator and template the value inside of, of the input range. Now this function is dressed up as an STL algorithm. And we still have our heap. You'll find all the code in the description below if you want to have a closer look. Also, you can find the code as it was at the beginning if you want to start out from a blank page with just the interface and the calling code. So that's one use case where having the heap is useful as opposed to having just a priority queue. If you know, other use cases, I'd love to hear about them. You can just write about them in the comments section below and I'd be delighted to read your comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed this series about heaps and priority queues. If you want more videos about data structures in C++ or more generally expressive code in C++, you can just smash up that red button below, subscribe to the channel and I'd be delighted to make more videos for you. And if you like this video, why not put a thumb up? That'd be lovely. Thank you and I'll see you next time.